Thank you. It's indeed an honor to be able to offer this morning's opening prayer. Since I began to serve here, my respect for the institution has continued to grow month by month. I may be up here today because I was the first one to say yes when I was asked if I would do the prayer, but it still remains a true honor to stand in front of you, my colleagues, as we gather. I need to at least briefly acknowledge the losses for all of us that have not been uh, specifically addressed, whether it's COVID-related deaths or illnesses, whether it's jobs or livelihoods, whether it's physical closeness or community gatherings. All of us have had losses uh, and need time and space to grieve. I invite you to join me in a moment of quiet reflection. Thank you. The prayer I offer today has borrowed extensively from the creativity of others and might better fit in a full legislative session, but it reflects some of my heartfelt appreciation for this institution and my commitment to the people we serve. May the spirit of prayer and meditation be in this chamber. We have gathered here today from different places and circumstances, life paths, vocations, and avocations, each with a unique personal faith, each with a different understanding of God. Different though we may be, we join together as one each and every time we convene as the main senate. In this, we, in this way, we are not unlike this world, a world in which we invest our love and hope. So let us invoke our love and hope in service to that which is worthy. Keep within each of our hearts love and hope for the cause of shared human welfare. Be with this assembly in its work. May we this day be reminded of the responsibilities we carry, not so that we are intimidated or overwhelmed, but that we may be true to them, so that we may be faithful in carrying them forward. Grant us the wisdom to create what is essential for the common good, guiding us with the spirits of courage, compassion, and commitment. May the members of this chamber maintain a high sense of their calling, remembering that we are invested here with honor, and called to a wider vision of the world, a world made more fair, more just, more equitable, and more safe by our efforts. Shalom, peace, blessed be, amen. Mm -hmm. Pledge of allegiance be led by the senator from Hancock, Senator Rosen. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United, United States of America. And, and to, to the, the republic, republic for which it stands, one nation, nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good morning, everyone. Before we begin this confirmation session, Chair would like to advise members on a few, mem uh, fr few reminders regarding the protocol and safety precautions for this unique situation we find ourselves in today. First, members, and I really much, very much appreciate this, but members must wear protective face covering while in the chamber. If any member is unable to wear a protective face covering, we ask that they step out of the chamber. Each member has been given an assigned seat in this chamber that is at least six feet apart from the next member. Your desk, chair, and microphone have been sanitized. The other contents on your desk have been untouched since last week. Throughout the session, please continue to maintain a distance of at least six feet apart from others at all times. Hand sanitizer is available on your desk and upon entering the chamber, so please use it often. Also, the windows in the chamber are open to provide additional airflow. And the house gallery is closed, uh, making sure that it's uh, just us and staff. Only senators and authorized essential legislative staff are allowed on the house chamber floor. As you can see, the press has been allowed down here in the well and up in the gallery in designated locations. No food or drink is in the chamber. Please note that there will be no floor distributions allowed. Also, no notes will be passed between members uh, by the staff. Voting tablets have been sanitized and placed on the member's assigned desk. 
These tablets must remain at the desk at all times. The chair will direct the secretary to give an overview of this system in a minute. Lastly, the chair will remind members that all Senate rules, decorum, and the rules of parliamentary practice comprised in Mason's Manual of Legislative Procedure or any other standard authority govern the Senate in all cases in which they are applicable and in which they are not inconsistent with the standing rules of the Senate or the joint rules of the two chambers, even though we're in the House this afternoon or this morning. So I'm going to pass it to... Uh, Secretary Grant, um, who has done unbelievable work with his um, staff and group, the people in the House, uh, putting this all together, a lot of work, a lot of thinking, a lot of planning has gone into this uh, to make this happen today, to make sure we get these important confirmations through. So with that, I'm going to pass it to Secretary Grant. Thank you. Uh, good morning. Just want to draw members' attention to the tablets on your desk. Um, these are assigned specifically to you, and I notice that you're all sitting in your assigned seats, so there shouldn't be any issues there. Um, these are new. It's a new voting system that we've acquired, and um, we're going to test it out this morning to see how the seven confirmation votes go. Um, it's a pretty simple tablet, though, as you can see on, on your desk. There's a button that's red, uh, green for yay, red for no, and then there's a reset button. So if you press yay or nay and you want to change your vote, press the reset and it will clear your vote so you can uh, change your vote. There's also an RTS button similar to the desks in the Senate chamber. RTS is request to speak. If you press that, that will show up on the president's uh, screen so he knows that you wish to speak. Right now you can't vote. It won't be allowed until the vote is open. Um, and we will give that a try when we do the quorum call. When we do the quorum call, I'll call your name. If you could say if you're present, please say that out loud and then press green button we'll, and we'll test it out. And it should actually appear here on this projection screen, but also it will appear on your tablet when the vote is open there's a uh, tab that's called display board. And when you press on the display board, it will show all 35 names and it will light up green or red. So you can also see how the vote is from your tablet. The last thing, if you are speaking, where we don't have anyone to um, direct to turn on the microphone. So on your desk, there's a little sticky arrow that shows you where to press on and off for the microphone if you do have to speak. Um, if you have any issues, just raise your hand. And Melissa, Nick are here. We got a bunch of other IT support staff in the back of the room. They will come over and try to help resolve any issues with your tablet. If there are any major issues, we're going to just go to a voice vote um, as well, just so we don't hold up things. But we figured we'd give this new system uh, a trial. So. Appreciate your cooperation, and that's all for now. As the secretary said, new system, uh, and we're going to go, you know, slow as we need to to make this work. Obviously, uh, these confirmations are important to have during this period, so we wanted to, wanted to get this done. Uh, so we're going to start. Um, I want to uh, let the chamber know that the senator from Somerset, Senator Farron, the senator from Anderscoggin, Senator Timberlake, the senator from York, Senator Woodsum, senator from Washington, Senator Moore, and the senator from Cumberland, Senator Breen, will be excused from all roll call votes today. Good. That's it. Senate Communication 1101, dated August 18th, 2020. Is it the pleasure of the Senate this communication be placed on file? It's a vote. Senate Communication 1102. Is it the pleasure of the Senate that this communication be placed on file? It's a vote. Quorum call. Secretary will call the roll of the Senate. Senator Bellows. Present. Senator Bellows, present. Senator Black. 
Senator Black present. Senator Breen's excused. Senator Carpenter. Present. Senator Carpenter present. Senator Carson. Present. Senator Carson present. Senator Chenette. Present. Senator Chenette present. Senator Chipman. Present. Senator Chipman present. Senator Claxton. Present. Senator Claxton present. Senator Searway. Present. Senator Searway present. Senator Davis. Present. Senator Davis present. Senator DeChambeau. Present. Senator DeChambeau present. Senator Diamond. Present. Senator Diamond present. Senator Dill. Present. Senator Dill present. Senator Dow. Present. Senator Dow present. Senator Farron's excused. Senator Foley. Present. Senator Foley present. Senator Gratwick. Present. Senator Gratwick present. Senator Guerin. Present. Senator Guerin present. Senator Hamper. Senator Hamper present. Senator Herbig. Present. Senator Herbig present. Senator Keim. Present. Senator Keim present. Senator Lawrence. Present. Senator Lawrence present. Senator Libby. Present. Senator Libby present. Senator Lucchini. Present. Senator Lucchini present. Senator Millette. Present. Senator Millette present. Senator Miramont. Present. Senator Miramont, present. Senator Moore is excused. Senator Pouliot. Present. Senator Pouliot, present. Senator Rosen. Present. Senator Rosen, present. Senator Heather Sanborn. Present. Senator Heather Sanborn, present. Senator Linda Sanborn. Present. Senator Linda Sanborn, present. Senator Timberlake's excused. Senator Vitelli. Present. Senator Vitelli, present. Senator Woodson's excused. President Jackson. Present. President Jackson, present. Present. Chair recognizes the Senator from Anderskog and Senator Libby. Anderskog and Senator Libby presents the Senate order and moves its passage. Secretary, read the order. Ordered that a message be sent to Governor Janet T. Mills informing her that in accordance with Article 5, Part 1, Section 8 of the Constitution of Maine, a quorum of senators is assembled in the House chamber for consideration of such business as may come before the Senate. It is a pleasure, Senate, that this Senate order be passed. It's a vote. The chair will appoint the Senator from Anderskoggin, Senator Libby, to deliver the message to the Governor. Chamber staff will escort the Senator from Anderskoggin, Senator Libby, to discharge his duty. Messages and documents from the executive, heads of departments, and others. Item 2 1 is a communication from the Chair Office of the Governor. Chair understands Senator from Anderskog and Senator Libby moves up the readings. Item 2 1 through 2 14 be dispensed with. News communications be ordered placed on file. Is this a pleasure of the Senate? It's a vote. <laughs> Chair lays for the Senate supplement number one. Supplement number one. On supplement number one, item 2 1 is a communication from the Office of the Governor. Senate Communication 1104. The Chair understands that Senator from Anderskog and Senator Libby moves that the reading of item 2 1 be dispensed with, and this communication be ordered placed on file. Is this a pleasure of the Senate? It's a vote. <laughs> Chair advised that uh, we're going to just wait for Senator Liberty to come back. We'll start the confirmations if everyone could remain in their seat so we can make this as orderly as possible. Senate's at ease.
Okay, recognize the Senator from Anderskog and Senator Libby. Here, here's the messenger and thanks the messenger. Item 2-15 is a communication from the Committee Chair on Judiciary. The Senator from Aroostook, Senator Carpenter, moves that the reading of item 215 be dispensed with and this communication be placed on file. Is this the pleasure of the Senate? Joint Standing Committee on Judiciary has recommended the nomination of the Honorable David J. Mitchell of Callis for reappointment as District Court Judge be confirmed. The pending question before the Senate is shall the recommendation of Joint Standing Committee on Judiciary be overridden in accordance with 3 MSRA Section 158 with Joint Rule 506 of the 129th Legislature. The vote will be taken by the yeas and nays. A vote of yes will be in favor of overriding the recommendation of the committee. A vote of no will be in favor of sustaining the recommendation of the committee. Is the Senate ready for the question? The doorkeeper will secure the chamber. The secretary will open the vote. The chair would advise if you need to reset or change your vote, you have to hit the reset button. All members now voted. The secretary will close the vote and run the total. Zero senators haven't voted in the affirmative and 30 senators haven't voted in the negative with five senators being excused and 30 being more than two thirds of the membership present. It is the vote of the Senate that the committee's recommendation be accepted. The nomination of the Honorable David J. Mitchell of Callis for reappointment as a district court judge is confirmed. Secretary is directed to inform the Speaker of the House of the Senate's action. Item 2-16 is a communication from the Committee Chair on Veterans and Legal Senator Affairs. Senator from Hancock, Senator Lucchini, moves that the reading item 216 be dispensed with and this communication be ordered placed on file. Is this the pleasure of the Senate to vote? The Joint Standing Committee on Veterans and Legal Affairs has recommended the nomination of Stephen J. Silver of South Portland for appointment to the Gambling Control Board be confirmed. The pending question for the Senate is, shall the recommendation of the Joint Standing Committee on Veterans and Legal Affairs be overridden in accordance with 3 MSRA Section 158 and with Joint Rule 506, 129th Legislature, the vote will be taken by the yeas and nays. A vote of yes will be in favor of overriding the recommendation of the committee. A vote of no will be in favor of staying the recommendation of the committee. Is the Senate ready for the question? The doorkeeper will secure the chamber and the secretary will open the vote. All now voted. Secretary will close the vote, run the total. Zero senators haven't voted in the affirmative and 30 senators haven't voted in the negative, with five senators being excused and 30 being more than two thirds of the membership present. Is it a vote of the Senate that the committee's recommendation be accepted? The nomination of Stephen J. Silver of South Portman for appointment to the Gambling Control Board is confirmed. Secretary is directed to inform the Speaker of the House for the Senate's action. Item 2 17 is a communication from the Committee Chair on Veterans and Senator Legal Affairs. Senator Hancock, Senator Lucchini moves to read item 217 be dispensed with, and this communication be ordered placed on file. Is this the pleasure of the Senate? It's a vote. The Joint Standing Committee on Veterans and Legal Affairs recommend the nomination of Andrew Conant of Hancock for appointment to the Gambling Control Board be confirmed. The pending question for the Senate is shall the recommendation of the Joint Standing Committee on Veterans and Legal Affairs be overridden? In accordance with 3 MSRA Section 158 and Joint Rule 506, 129th Legislature, the vote will be taken by the yeas and nays. A vote of yes will be in favor of overriding the recommendation of the committee. A vote of no will be in favor of staying the recommendation of the committee. Is the Senate ready for the question? The doorkeeper will secure the chamber. The Secretary will open the vote.
All now voted. Secretary will close the vote and run the total. Zero senators having voted in the affirmative and 30 senators having voted in the negative, with five senators being excused and 30 being more than two thirds of the membership present, it is the vote of the Senate that the committee's recommendation be accepted. The nomination of Andrew Conant of Hancock for appointment to the Gambling Control Board is confirmed. The Secretary is directed to inform the Speaker of the House of the Senate's action. Item 2-18 is a communication from the Committee on Veterans and Legal Affairs. Chair understands that Senator Hancock, Senator Lucchini moves that the reading of 218 be dispensed with this communication be ordered placed on file. Is this the pleasure of the Senate? It's a vote. Joint Standing Committee on Veterans and Legal Affairs recommended the nomination of Dr. Charmaine A. Brown, DMV of Monmouth for appointment to the Gambling Control Board be confirmed. The pending question for the Senate is shall the recommendation of the Joint Standing Committee on Veterans and Legal Affairs be overridden? In accordance with 3 MSRA Section 158 and Joint Rule 506 of the 129th Legislature, the vote will be taken by the yeas and nays. A vote of yes will be in favor of overriding the recommendation of the committee. A vote of no will be in favor of sustaining the recommendation of the committee. Is the Senate ready for the question? The doorkeeper will secure the chamber. The Secretary will open the vote. All members now voted. Secretary will close the vote and run the total. Zero senators having voted in the affirmative and 30 senators having voted in the negative, with five senators being excused and 30 being more than two thirds of the membership present. It is the vote of the Senate that the committee's recommendation be accepted. The nomination of Dr. Charmaine A. Brown, DMV of Monmouth, for appointment to the Gambling Control Board is confirmed. <laughs> Secretary Director informed the Speaker of the House of the Senate's action. Item 2 19 is a communication from the Committee Senator on Veterans. Hancock, Senator Lucchini moves that the reading of item 219 be dispensed with, and this communication be ordered placed on file. Is this the pleasure of the Senate? It's a vote. The Joint Standing Committee on Veterans and Legal Affairs recommend the nomination of Dennis Marble of Hamden for appointment to the Commission on Governmental Ethics and Election Practices be confirmed. The pending question for the Senate is shall the recommendation of the Joint Standing Committee on Veterans and Legal Affairs be overridden? In accordance with 3 MSRA Section 158 with Joint Rule 506 the 129th Legislature, the vote will be taken by the yeas and nays. A vote of yes will in favor overriding the recommendation of the committee. A vote of no will be in favor sustaining the recommendation of the committee. Is the Senate ready for the question? Doorkeeper will secure the chamber. The secretary will open the vote. All now voted. The secretary will close the vote and run the total. Zero senators having voted in the affirmative and 30 senators having voted in the negative, with five senators being excused and 30 being more than two thirds of the membership present. It is the vote of the Senate that the committee's recommendation be accepted. The nomination of Dennis Marble of Hamden for appointment to the Commission on Governmental Ethics and Election Practices is confirmed. The secretary is directed to inform the Speaker of the House of the Senate's action. Item 2 20 is a communication from the Committee on Chair Veterans and Legal Affairs. Senator from Hancock, Senator Lucchini moves that the reading item 220 be dispensed with, and this communication be ordered placed on file. Is this the pleasure of the Senate? It's a vote. The Joint Standing Committee on Veterans and Legal Affairs recommended the nomination of the Honorable David R. Hastings of Freiburg for appointment to the Commission on Governmental Ethics and Election Practices be confirmed. The pending question for the Senate is shall the recommendation of the Joint Standing Committee on Veterans and Legal Affairs be overridden? In accordance with 3 MSRA Section 158 with Joint Rule 506 the 129th Legislature, the vote will be taken by the yeas and nays. A vote of yes will be in favor of overriding the recommendation of the committee. A vote of no will be in favor of sustaining the recommendation of the committee. Is the Senate ready for the question? The doorkeeper will secure the chamber. The Secretary will open the vote. All members now voted. Secretary will close the vote and run the total. Zero senators having voted in the affirmative and 30 senators having voted in the negative, with five senators being excused and 30 being more than two thirds of the membership present. It is the vote of the Senate that the committee's recommendation be accepted. The nomination of the Honorable David R. Hastings of Freiburg for appointment to the Commission on Governmental Ethics and Election Practices is confirmed. <laughs> Secretary is directed to inform the Speaker of the House of the Senate's action. Item 2 21 is a communication Chair from the Committee Senator on Veterans. Senator Hancock, Senator Lucchini moves the reading of item 221 be dispensed with, and this communication be ordered placed on file. Is this the pleasure of the Senate? It's a vote. 
You understand? Committee on Veterans and Legal Affairs recommended the nomination of the Honorable William J. Snyder of Durham for appointment to the Commission on Governmental Ethics and Election Practice be confirmed. The pending question for the Senate is shall the recommendation of the Joint Standing Committee on Veterans and Legal Affairs be overridden in accordance with 3 MSRA Section 158 with Joint Rule 506 and 129th Legislature, the vote will be taken by the A's and A's. The vote of yes will be in favor of the recommendation of the Committee. The vote of no will be in favor of the recommendation of the Committee. Is the Senate ready for the question? The doorkeeper will secure the chamber and the secretary will open the vote. Have all members now voted? The secretary will close the vote and run the total. Zero senators haven't voted in the affirmative and 30 senators haven't voted in the negative with five senators being excused and 30 being more than two thirds of the membership present. It is the vote of the Senate that the committee's recommendation be accepted. The nomination of the Honorable William J. Schneider of Durham for appointment to the Commission on Governmental Ethics and Election Practices is confirmed. The Secretary is directed to inform the Speaker of the House of the Senate's actions. Orders. The Chair recognizes the Senator from Saginaw Hawk, Senator Vitelli. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, I present a Senate order and move its passage. Senator for Sagadahawk, Senator Vitelli presents a Senate order and moves its passage. Secretary, read the order. Order that a message be sent to Governor Janet T. Mills informing her that the Senate has transacted all business before it and is ready to adjourn without day. Is it a pleasure to send it to this Senate order to be passed? It's a vote. Chair will appoint the Senator for Sagadahawk, Senator Vitelli, to deliver the message to the Governor. Chamber staff will escort the Senator for Sagadahawk. Senator Vitelli, does it discharge your duty? The Senate will be at ease. While the Senator from Sagadahawk, Senator Vitelli, is gone, I'm going to recognize the Senator from Cumberland, Senator Diamond. Thank you, Mr. President, and members of the Senate are requesting unanimous consent to address the Senate on the record. Uh, off the record. Off the record. That's fine. The senator from Cumberland, Senator Diamond, is going to address the Senate off the record. So moved. Uh, Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen of the Senate, I just want to point out what wonderful work was done by the Maine State Archives, the Senate staff, the House staff, on the journals of the first legislature of the uh, state of Maine in 1820. Um, that first legislature convened on May 31st and adjourned uh, the first uh, day of July, I believe, a July 2nd, maybe. Um, and the work they did was the very beginning of our state government. And this, this compilation of those two journals is just fantastic. And I really want to thank everybody and so many people who had such, played such an important role in bringing this all together. So take a look at it. It's a little difficult to read. Uh, some of the longhand, but it really, uh, it really is a wonderful read, especially when we realized this was the beginning of our great state of Maine. So a big thank you for everybody who worked so hard on this. And, I, and one little note, I would say that, remind everybody that all the celebrations for 1820, uh, our bicentennial, are all locked in for 21. So it'll be 200 plus one next year that we can all celebrate. So uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen. Chair recognizes the Senator from Tom Scott, Senator Dill. I don't. Chair recognizes the Senator from Cumberland, Senator Diamond. Uh, I thank you, Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen, a request unanimous consent to address the Senate off the record. So moved. I just want to respond. Indeed, it was very hot. And uh, in fact, um, in my experience in this legislature, uh, however, it's been a lot hotter in previous, from subsequent uh, sessions. So I, and I think uh, Senator Dill probably uh, recognizes all of that. But thank you very much. Off the record, Senator Diamond, do you know if Senator Dill had termed out previously that session? <laughs> the 
Do I recognize the Senator from Saginaw Hawk, Senator Vitelli? Chair, here's the message and thanks the messenger. <laughs> Announcements. Chair has one announcement. Uh, I want to thank everyone for coming in today. Um, I know it's short. Uh, I know you know it all took time out of your uh, schedules to come in. Obviously, um, these confirmations were important, especially the Ethics Commission that has not operated the way it was intended to for, I believe, three years now. So. Obviously, very important to bring uh, people in for that. So, I definitely want to thank everyone for today, uh, even though I know it was a very short period. But uh, in addition to that, uh, before we leave, I want to uh, thank the Senate Secretary, uh, his staff, Melissa, Nick, everyone that worked uh, on this uh, went flawlessly, uh, which was great. Uh, but they really put a lot of effort in in the past week, and I'd like to give them all a round of applause before we adjourn today. <laughs> Is there any objection all matters thus acted upon being sent forth with? Hearing none, so ordered. Chair recognizes the Senator from Penobscot, Senator Gratwick. Thank you, Mr. President. I'm on mic. Mr. President, I move that the first confirmation session of the 129th Legislature stand adjourned, sign and die. The Senator from Penobscot, Senator Gratwick. Moves that the first confirmation sentence of the 129th legislature stand adjourned, sign and die, at 11:41 a.m. Monday, August 24, 2020. It's a vote. <laughs>